Where do you fit in the economy? What role do you play? In reality, we live our lives in three distinct but overlapping sectors, households, businesses, and our community. Everyone is the member of a household, an independent economic unit. This is our life outside of work or school. Our household may include spouses, parents, and children, but even if you live on your own, you're the head of your own household. We all have connections to businesses, either as an employee or a proprietor, as customers or as investors. We are all also members of a larger community. We are connected to our neighbors at the very least through our need for public services, schools, police, and fire protection being the most obvious. We are all thus connected by the need to pay for them. All of us have civic responsibilities, the most basic of which involves obeying rules, voting, and paying taxes. For a simple picture, we can use a circular flow diagram that shows the relationship between households and firms. Households supply the factors of production needed for production, with labor services being the most important for most of us. We sell these services and other factors through factor markets. Firms transform these factors into finished goods and services that are in turn sold to households who pay for them with the income earned by selling their factors to businesses. This exchange takes place in goods markets. A more complex and accurate picture includes several additional features. Money flows through the economy to track movements and transactions of goods and services. If anything of value changes hands, there will always be a corresponding flow of money in the opposite direction. The government sector provides services including income redistribution and is funded by taxes. Every economy interacts with other nations by selling exports and buying imports. Where do we work? There's a standardized classification system that defines and categorizes the various functions or industries in which people work. Natural resources and mining includes people who dig up oil and gas for energy or harvest minerals and trees. Construction, people who build homes, stores, offices, or lay roads and build power and water systems. Manufacturing. Workers engage in transforming raw materials or bits and pieces into finished tangible products such as cars and computers. Trade, transportation, utilities. Wholesaling or retailing goods, moving goods or people, or producing water and power. Information, making, distributing, or broadcasting information and, enter and entertainment. Financial activities, bankers and stockbrokers and real estate agents. Professional business services, lawyers, accountants, architects, engineers, oh boy, scientists, consultants, photographers, oh joy. Educational and health services, vocational schools and private colleges, doctors and hospitals. Leisure and hospitality, recreational services including live entertainment, museums and theme parks. Other services, a grab bag of everything that doesn't fit somewhere else, from repairing things to religious services, from lobbying to laundry, from pet care to parking cars, and government. Despite what you think when you pay your taxes on April 15th, public schools dominate government employment. You may have heard that we're, we've entered a post-industrial phase, that we are a service economy. In fact, most of us are employed in service industries. Goods producing industries include mining, construction, and manufacturing. The rest are service industries. The transition to this phase has been going on for a long time. In 1960, service-producing industries accounted for 65% of our jobs. 
In 1978, services accounted for 72% of our jobs. In 2008, they accounted for 84% of our jobs. So yes, the service sector is growing in importance, but it's been the dominant sector for a long time.